Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes. His name is Bricky. And uh, we've got some stuff. We've got some 40K stuff to talk about today that I'm sure Bricky's just so excited about. But before we do, if you enjoyed today's episode, head on over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, where you can get access to our Discord, uh, bloopers if they happen, HD versions of the post are the $15 tier. Bricky, tell them about uh, I guess, I guess the Merch in the Book Club. Well, you, 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 yeah, all right. Um, you know, I'll do that. Uh, we have yeah. our book club coming out probably this week, I think. So you should really read Day of Ascension because if you haven't, mm. you're behind. Ooh. And also, we have brand new merch in the store the little uh, ridiculous, just a little ridiculous shirt and hoodie. Both are currently available. Check the description out of the video at orchidate.com. Grab yourself some brand new merch and it's uh it's pretty cool it says merch it's all of us shy is angry and we're clueless as it goes mm. on brand as you very on brand mm. it is how it is how it be so it is um, what it is so uh so, so you know uh, yeah so, how's it how's it going Bricky? Do you, do you have a quote for me today <laughs> um I mean, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve tabs currently open. Ooh, um, actually, actually, one of them was uh, was uh, we're too old to sheesh. Yeah, you're probably right. We're too old to sheesh. Yeah. All right. So, like, there's it's the Blood Angels. We know it's the Blood Angels today. Of we know course, we know, we know that it's the Blood Angels. It's the Blangles. Yeah. And this this is gonna be my favorite <laughs> episode because it's going to be Bricky. Why didn't you talk more about the seven fucking Blood Angels main characters that I love specifically in your one hour long episode? Because there are so mm. many Blood Angels characters, and they're all decently important. Um. Ooh. There are definitely plenty that will have... There's at least two of them that definitely will deserve their own episode. That being Dante and Mephiston. Um, okay. But there's also Astarath the Grim, the Sanguinor, Ascalion, Tycho the Lost, Brother something or another, um, Bofades, you know, everything in between. <laughs> um, Bofades nuts? Hey, dude, listen, man. Blood angels are stored in the balls. Indeed. The balls, the ball secundus. So, so you said Dante and Mephiston are worthy of their own episode. Are we going to talk about them today, like briefly, and then do separate episodes on them? Most likely, but when those okay. episodes will arrive, who knows? It could be years. Oh, it sure, could sure, be. Sure. It could be decades. You might be dead, Blood Angels. So, <laughs> um, let's let's go ahead and hit some some Blood Angels off. Let's let's start off with a quote by by Dante himself, the man um, <clears throat> from Devil May Cry. Uh, tax evasion is a crime, Virgil. All right. Uh, <laughs> for is. 1,100 years, I have fought and I have seen the darkness in our galaxy. I have seen the vileness of the alien and the heresy of the mutant. I have witnessed the sin of possession. I have seen all the evil that the galaxy harbors, and I have slain all those presents. Shit. And I have slain all whose presence defiles the emperor. <laughs> I have seen what you will see. I have fought what you must fight. And I have slain what you must slay. So fear not and be proud. For we are the sons of Sanguinius, the protectors of mankind. I, we are indeed the angels of death. Commander Dante addressing a new group of blood angels neophytes. He sounds he's, uh, like a cool guy. Yeah, he's pretty depressed. I won't lie. Uh, well, he I has... mean, aren't all blood angels kind of depressed after Sanguinius dies? This guy in particular is Dante has got a higher level of, of depresso compared oh. to a few others. I think he just wants to die um, because he's so damn old, but he has a purpose to fulfill. So, anywho, the forty k where everyone wants to die it is a pity that we can die only once in the emperor's service. <laughs> um, but anyway, the Blood Angels. So the Ninth Legion themselves are a legion that, of course, started off over in Terra, as all Blood Angels tend to... Or all um, chapters Blangles. began. The Blangles. The Blangles. The Blang Blangles are stored in the balls. Mm -hmm. They have a shockingly high amount of successor chapters. 
including the Angels in Carmine, Angels Excelsius, Angels Glorious, Angels Numinous, uh, Angels Penitent, Angels Resplendent, Angels Sanguine, Angels Vermilion, Angels of Light, and that is about a sixth. Um, the wow. more notable ones are the Flesh Eaters and Flesh Terrors, uh, the Lamenters, and also a couple others, like the Blood Drinkers, uh, which is Damn. a little on the nose. It's a little um, bit. It's a little on the nose with the Red Thirst and, you know. But the Blood Angels were way back when, when they were from Terra and fighting off the old horrors of old night is where they kind of started getting a little bit bizarre. So this kind of contrasts with my initial assumptions that, all right, the, the Chaos Gods could not get to the Primarchs, but they kind of fucked with them a little bit in their stasis capsules, which is why Sanguinius has the wings. Yeah. I assumed... Okay. That perhaps he might, that also might be the reason why the Red Thirst is a thing. That's but, a safe assumption, yeah. But it seems that that issue may have been persistent as just a flaw in Sanguinius in general with his creation. Because it seems oh. that the overall Blood Angels have had interesting, problematic uh, early days, so to speak. Okay. So. They were helping out the Emperor reclaim the soul system from Old Knight, which is basically a phrase. Oh, we haven't talked much about Old Knight, but it's basically <clears throat> like, wow, humanity is this mutant, horrible, techno, barbarian, blah, 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 blah kind of people. And they went out to go rid the solar system of these people. Okay. Um, the problem okay. is that with this, it was called the, the dregs of Old Knight. Um, the unification wars, etc., and oh, part okay. of this yeah, yeah. was uh, part of this was all these people were like chem strained uh, humanoids and rad saturated humanoids, and they often would recruit from the less vile versions of them into their chapter. Um, okay. This started to make them it gave them a reputation. The Ninth Legion was given a reputation of being pretty fucking vile. And, and very violent, like more okay. violent than the norm. I think I mean forty uh, k. That's pretty violent. If you're more violent than the norm, that, it, uh, yes, you're kind of a savage. That that was the problem. Was that they were a lot more savage than most other legions. In fact, Malkador the Sigilite even claimed them to be known as the Revenant Legion early on because of their just high volume of of slaughter they would wow. okay. bring out okay. um as time went on they actually were sent on out over to fix up a area in neptune and neptune's moons from the dredges of old night and the emperor was kind of seeing how they were acting and how they were just <laughs> just the way they were fighting and it was kind of like a suicide mission like, go deal with these people while I go get the Mechanicus back, while I start working with um, all these people in our closer system, go to Neptune, deal with the problem there. And he kind of okay. just expected them to all fucking die. Um, <laughs> okay, send them on a suicide mission because they're mindless savages. Also, are these pictures of what they used to look like, the Chai's posting? Because they are indeed just like tribal savages. No, those are the techno barbarians of old knights, the old Oh, uh, okay. So that's those are, those are those are the people they were trying to like get rid of. Yeah, they all they often ah, um utilize okay. the uh, uh what is it called? Um the Thunder Warriors uh oh, to get sure, rid of them, sure. but they did recruit from them. I mean, if you see the second guy, he has an Imperial Aquila on his arm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's a little bit here and there. Yeah, they're um, gnarly. But like they're they're still marines and all that but they're just a lot more violent than normal you know yeah yeah and so they sent them to neptune and they basically never heard back like okay that's about ah, so right. they just assumed that they died on the suicide mission as expected no big loss that's what he expected okay but they went there and well found them there and the place was <laughs> a was, was just a massacre and everyone that was still available to be recruited into the blood angels or the revenant legion was recruited into them. And they were just these like gore spattered warriors, like very not very practical and very inglorious, but hey, you know, they were they were the murderers that they did their job. 
Yeah, they got the job done. Um, on what should have been a suicide mission, they succeeded. So, I mean, good job. Like, you get a gold star. I. How do you greet them after that? That's the problem. And in particular, there was a fight during the early years of the Great Crusade known as the Charnel Feast. Oh. Uh, which is not great. And I'm, I'm not going to go through too much of this, but this is before Sanguinius was found. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and they, they were going and getting... Eh, it's kind of a lot of stuff here. But the long story short is that they were going to an area that had a bunch of, like... What was the Great Crusade? They said they liberate, liberate a world, right? From Kai Birans is the name of the place. And okay. they would constantly sustain themselves in an economy of acts of like ritual acts of bloodshed and cannibalism. Oh. Thing is, is they kind of had this sort of siege issue here of like kind of holding the the supplies from their stores and having a little stalemate of their fortresses and all that. Mm -hmm. So in order to, as they were kind of cut off from wider resources, the long story short is that the Blood Angels started cannibalizing the enemy and oh. just started just started in, like, encouraging them to join their enemy in cannibalization of the war dead to deny the enemy of their own food. Oh, boy. I, 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 I mean, I guess when you hear about how like terrible and savage and brutal they are, I, I guess in 40k the natural endpoint is cannibalism. But ooh, ugh. Um, I would imagine this also translates sort of into like red thirst and needing blood before you know, otherwise you go kind of crazy. Well, the it was like a twofold thing because they would help sustain themselves by eating the enemy's dead, and they would also starve the enemy of their food since they were yeah, cannibals. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, like you you just kind of roll up into an ex battlefield, and they're all like drained of blood, and they're all just being ripped apart. And so slowly and slowly, they were able to gain ground and defeat this area yeah. as they attempt as the enemy uh, El Eclobia. Uh, was trying to flee from a, with a spacecraft. He just ran into Dorn and all of his legion in orbit. It was like, hey, dude. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> You've got nowhere to go. And so Dorn looked down there and was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I bet Dorn loved seeing that. I bet that just made his day of all uh, the people was... to see that. Woo! He was not happy, but but he actually mm. had a bit of a, a of a bro moment where he's like, this is disgusting. You're all disgusting, but good job, I guess. And then he burned their city to the ground so that nobody could record what happened there. That's that's fair. I mean, it's like, well, I mean, you you got rid of them. You did your job, but... Ugh. So this is kind of where the blood, the, the red thirst of the blood angels was really starting to make its way and they were getting more and more debilitated from it because you know it started as them being really good at fighting and then becoming debilitated and now they're eating corpses and <laughs> and sucking it, the blood dry yeah it's bad and and the legend of the ninth legion grew as a frightening concept they were they were not just like the emperor's forces they were hidden murderers with a hunger for blood and death they 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 sounded like fucking modern day night lords. They were just this this like creature in the night. This this uh, absolute like incarmine savage. Yeah, I can see how they would get that reputation after uh, after their track record. Yeah, that makes sense. It was said that if it was not for the arrival of the angel right after this, there is a good chance this legion this legion's head was on the chopping block. They were going to be removed and expunged like the second and eleven legions. Oof, well, yeah. Yeah. The, the sword was sense. up. The head was there. The sword <laughs> was up. It was like, these you guys need to knock it off. This is a problem. We've already gotten rid of two other legions for heinous crimes <laughs> and watch the, it. The pendulum was swinging. So uh did they have any form of like leadership at this point like was anybody did anyone have them under control or were they all just like savage and just like they were all just merciless killers that wanted to drink blood and eat 
human flesh. Like, what, well, what there's was always there, uh, the hierarchy like? There's always a leader. There's, I mean, it's a military force. There's always a captain. Sure, and sure. Something like that. They just, but like, <laughs> they just sound like a pack of like bloodthirsty thugs. No, no. There's there's still warriors, but they just commit war in a very bizarre way. <laughs> yeah. They still have a hierarchy. They still have captains. Okay. They still have okay. all that kind of stuff. But luckily for them, before that sword could come down, Sanguinius was found. Hooray! And that, and that kind of kept them under bay for a bit. That was yeah. like, okay, the angel is here, and the angel is great, and he's so beautiful, and oh my god. Mm -hmm. And then they started to really calm themselves, and then that, that really kind of kept the red thirst in check a little bit more than before. I don't know if we've talked about this before, but how did they decide that Sanguinius was going to lead that specific group of, like, savages that were about to get uh, killed because of how brutal they are? It, was it just like, oh, yeah, it's, he's always been the leader of the Ninth. He was always going, like, because you would think if they had any choice of who to put Sanguinius' best boy in charge of, it wouldn't be them. Oh, I mean, the... Well, it, Sanguinius is going to be put in charge because they're his sons from his gene seed, obviously. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Like, yeah, because like these are his sons born from his gene seed, so they're going to be his legion, no okay. matter what. I guess I guess that didn't register with me for a second. Okay. Uh, yeah, they don't just like kind of pick and choose. Like, I want that yeah, yeah, one. Because yeah. <laughs> um, I was like, if they could pick and choose, man, Sanguinius ain't going to lead these fuckers. Now, and, and the person who decides that whether or not they're going to be expunged is like Malkador and the Emperor. Like, that's why no one talks about them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, yeah, don't, like, don't forget about like Lorgar and stuff, where as soon as they went to go see Lorgar, they're like, oh, his zeal, his piety. Uh, uh, and they just start True. fucking violently um, <laughs> Like, violently. <laughs> like, like, like they, they're, <laughs> they blow up their armor and they all fall over. Mm -hmm. It's very important. That it, it wasn't it wasn't the emperor forcing them to kneel. It was it was the weakness in their legs from violently orgasming from his sight. <laughs> the violent orgasm forced them to kneel before the Primarch. So Sanguinius returns that whole thing. Oh, oh damn, that is going. a huge wall of text. What the fuck? Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead, dude. Uh, what does that say for current character? Uh, Sanguinius did much to establish the culture and beliefs of the chapter. He transformed the Blood Angels from an army of killers into a legion of noble warriors that were also well versed in art and poetry. There is a mystical streak in many of the Blood Angels and a strong belief that things can be changed for the better. Basically, they kind of need to strive a lot for perfection and take interest in fine things like art and music to stop themselves from falling into their insane old selves, uh, especially under constant pressure of red thirst and black rage. They're also kind of they're also kind of ruled by somewhat democracy, two organizations, Red Council and the Council of Blood are in charge of them because they need to work together spiritually and physically uh, to keep everyone in check. And they outrank chapter masters because as blood angels, you're kind of expected to die or go insane at any point. Mm, makes huh. sense. Yeah, makes sense that you would, uh, you know, you need to put your mind on something else other than, wow, I'm actually insane. Oh, wow, red thirst. Uh, so, yeah, that makes sense as to why you would want them to be, you know, fine art, music, poetry, and get them into the finer things, something to distract them from the insanity and bloodshed. Well, you know, it's always good to have a different hobby than eating the dead. <laughs> yeah, well said. <laughs> it, it tends to it tends to help a decent amount with, with the overall problems. Well said. Well put. Well put. Truly, thank you. Thank you. Truly, truly, you are a philosopher. I, I've been known for my for my high levels of intelligence. <laughs> Oh, oh yes, that is what Bricky is known for, just high IQ. All many, right. many brain cells just bouncing off of each other, yeah. Now, all right, now listen here, young man. <laughs> but let's talk a little bit about the Red Thirst, because I have a, <laughs> I have a very hard time nailing this down. It's like calculus, okay? It just, it just doesn't okay. compute properly in my, in my head. So the difference between the Red Thirst and the Black Rage... 
Mm -hmm. so figuring those two things out. So I think I finally got in a handle you on it. Got it. Okay. I think this I was, this finally got it. This was a point of contention it. in the last episode. People it was. A little, you know. Well, they're okay. always they're always a little miffed, but that's because that yeah. that's because that that I'm I'm bad at my job. So <laughs> red thirst. Ac hey, entertainment for accuracy. Mm -hmm. Um, red thirst. All right. It is. It is the. Uh, Overall vampiric craving for blood and the slow, slow descent into more and more wanton violence. Okay. It, it is the craving for blood and, and the the tick of like anger and the tick of like this feral kind of murderous vibe that they have. Right. That is and the idea of the red thirst. Yeah, and the red thirst has has always existed with them, right? Or it's existed for a while, like before Sanguinea showed up. They still had the red thirst. It is yeah, it was believed that they have like a like an early version of the red thirst, but they yeah. did not have the black rage yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the actual red thirst is something that is basically uncurable. It continues and it continues and it continues and it gets worse and worse and they keep trying to hold it in check. But it's like it's like a dementia patient in the sense where like you can do your very best to to bring it down, but it's only gonna uh, get but worse. Yeah, there's no cure for it. It's only gonna get worse. You can only hope to slow it. Yes, and if they ever end up falling fully to the red thirst, they tend to go into this. They get they get locked away basically. Uh, in this thing called the Tower of the Lost, where they succumb to a complete, roiling, uncontrollable insanity. That's an appropriate name for the tower. Which, I must admit, a bit bizarre that they put them in the tower. Because, yeah. like, I don't, just a little bit weird, I thought that they are executed originally by, da 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 da, Asterath the Grim. High Chaplain of the Blood Angels. But I believe he actually executes those with the Black Rage, not the um, the Red Thirst. Huh. So everybody that's too far gone in the Red Thirst, they just put in the tower and what, they just kill each other? Or do they literally uh, lock them in, like, prison cells so that my, they can't harm themselves or others? My mind would be they would lock them inside coffins because that's pretty Blood Angels-y. Oh, yeah, it's very vampiric, sure, yeah. I actually don't know. They they are locked away in the Tower of the Lost on Ball where they succumb to uncontrollable insanity. I don't know why they don't just kill them. Yeah, you would think that you would either want to execute them or or like if you could like cryo sleep them or or put them in suspended animation and then just drop them on a planet like in a torpedo or something and then just wake up and just go on a rampage on on uh, enemy front lines or something after you airdrop them in. Well, that second thing you're you're describing is the Death Company, and that that's is true. A that's true. Part that is a part of the uh, the Black Rage, mm -hmm. which you fall so, completely to it, right? Yes. So the Black Rage is the psychic feedback of Sanguinius's death. Um, they had a little proto version, a little version of the Black Rage when Sanguinius was knocked out by Kalbanda the corn demon on that one planet mm, yeah yeah um but it wasn't the full level and so his yeah. death was the psychic backlash uh, from horus and that's when they sent them all into the black rage and the black rage is the mental instability of them seeing themselves on horus's flagship and oh. fighting or, or yeah and fighting the traitor himself and that is but it's also actually does give them a few interesting things. Um, one, they're so coming to the Black Rage, they actually fight a bit harder. They're also a bit tougher. Um, despite the fact that they're like they're like half mad with Fury, but they they're actually a little bit stronger, like genuinely stronger. So it, so it, I mean, it makes sense that it would, that it would make them stronger because they just go into a frenzy, right? Because they think they're fighting Horus, and of course you're gonna fight a little bit harder. A little bit stronger and all that. But uh, very often when you succumb to the Black Rage, it's like the eve before a fight or something. And when you've either... I think it's... This is the hard 
part is figuring out the difference between the Red Thirst and the, death, uh, and the Black Rage when it comes to Death Company. Um, but I do believe that the Death Company is Black Rage based, where when they are in that permanent psychosis of the Black Rage, then that's when it, go ahead, it goes ahead and they get sent into the Death Company. Shai tells me that the Red Thirst and Black Rage are 100% separate and do not influence each other. Which is surprising because they, they are very similar in concept. The one to drink blood and being a murderous crazed person and hallucinating yourself in a different area as a murderous person. Yeah, and just going into a, a, a frenzy of rage trying to kill Horus, they, they do seem to kind of parallel themselves a little bit. They do. I'm kind of surprised why they're different, but I, I guess they I guess they're different. This is one of those things I had a hard time figuring out. Um, let's see. It's Shai says generally, if a space marine goes into red thirst overdrive, they become savage vampire monster, murder a civilian or two, drink their blood, and they come back to normal. Whereas the the black rage is like the permanent end. Yeah, you never come back from the black rage. But if 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 you if you fall to the red thirst. You can drink some blood, come back, and be like, oh, I'm okay. But it gets, but like, you're okay for a bit. And then it comes back again. It gets worse. And then it gets worse and worse. You gotta drink more blood and more blood. Then you get locked up in the tower. Um, So when you you succumb to the Black Rage, you become a death company. Where you are deemed for your final glorious fights uh, of your death. Because if you don't die in this battle, then Astaroth the Grim... High Chaplain of the Blood Angels will execute you uh, for your... Well, he'll execute you. Mm. Well, that's a no-win situation. No, it's not. Well, there is you no winning. You are pretty what? much dead. Once you follow the Black Rage, that's it. Except yep. for somebody. Uh, Mr. Mephiston. Hey, Mephiston Red. Is it Mephiston Red? Yep, you're right. Yes. Blood Angel Red. Makes sense. Um, He is also known as the Lord of Death, and he is the Master of the Librarius and the Chief Librarian Psyker of the Blood Angels. The thing interesting about uh, Mephiston is that he has defeated the psychosis of the Black Rage, not just once, but twice. Twice he has fallen to the Black Rage, and he has pulled out of it. How exactly does that work? How do you pull out of the Black Rage? I wonder if anything with him being a psyker has to do with it. Maybe he just has that level of mental stability with the the warp that he's able to pull himself out. But Hmm. this is mainly a concept of, wow, Mephiston is so incredibly strong of will and power, he was able to pull himself out. But... Yes, uh, Mephiston actually recently got a brand new model. Um, and, oh. Uh, yeah, he's got like a Primaris model now. And it looks really good in my opinion. Um, cool. But he's, cool. Uh, he, as the chief librarian, was is the, I think the, oh, yeah, he's the only person to have, in all the Blood Angels, to have been able to pull out the Black Rage, not just once, huh. but twice. Um, wow. he's, he's also considered to be one of the strongest psychers in the entire Imperium of Man, uh, along with, well, he probably can't beat out like Kaldor Drago and some of them, but along with like Chief Librarian Tigarius, for example. Okay. Okay. Which is, uh, Blueberry. <laughs> Blueberries. Yeah. Gross. We'll have a, we'll have a whole, uh, episode on Mephiston one day. Um, I mean, but, he sounds dope. I mean, uh, also, Shy posted a wall of text. Uh, would you about... like to read it? Sure. <clears throat> During the second War for Armageddon campaign, uh, Calistarius became a victim of the Black Rage. After being inducted into the Death Company, he took part in the assault on the Ecclesiarchy building and was one of many trapped inside when the building collapsed during battle. For seven days, Calistarius lay trapped in the rubble, teetering on the edge of death and madness. Somehow, rather than succumbing to the Red Thirst, he managed to conquer it. By sheer strength of will, he was able to suppress and hold in check the feelings of rage and the desire for blood. And in so doing, he became something more. On the seventh night, he burst free of his rocky tomb, reborn as Mephiston, the Lord of 
death. Wow. Not bad. So he just got super hella trapped under some rubble, uh, succumbed to the red thirst, and just through sheer strength of will was able to hold it all in check. How is and, how and is it coming to it, the red how is it coming to the red thirst even real? Just like don't. Like just close the <laughs> laptop, you know? Like how is cyberbullying even real? Just just turn off the computer. <laughs> just don't. Hello, just don't. Just don't. So oh, what a what a badass. So that there would be the the uh I think I finally I think I finally figured out the red thirst and black rage difference. It just Give it him was a hand, not everyone. It was not computing in my brain. Well, I'll ask Dorn for a hand. He's I know Ooh, he uh, he doesn't have one. Low blow. He's too tall. I can't low blow him. I'll hit his ankle. Can't low blow him and he can't read. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> let's talk uh let's <laughs> moving talk right along. Let's talk recruitment a little okay. bit. So recruiting people for the Blood Angels. Well, this is how they used to recruit them. I don't know if they do that anymore because of a certain uh, Tyranid fleet. But basically, in order to join the Blood Angels, they would take people from the feral tribes of Baal Secundus, their radiation-stricken moon. And they would take part in some violent games and tournaments, battling in the landscape, all that fun stuff. However, okay. the time of challenge is heralded by their visit with their flying chariots, a.k.a. their Thunderhawks. And the first trial is to reach the place of challenge by any means necessary. And the place of challenge is where the contestants will make their way across the ra radiations through deserts, leaping from these giant cliffs with these crude hang glider gliders to cross the gap. They have to get away from giant scorpions and other mutated predators, that whole thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you, you weed out the weak and the hazards of the desert and all that. So once they arrive... They do some gladiatorial contests, all that fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they get 50 or so places available total. Those who oh. are able to make it are taken. And those who fail are left behind to guard the testing place or return back to their tribe. Oh, okay. So you mm -hmm. either succeed or you get left behind as a guard. Basically, if you challenge. want to. Okay. Or you yeah. can just leave back to the tribe. Okay. Um, okay. The successful aspirants are then taken to the Fortress Monastery on Ball itself and are paraded around by all the members of the chapter before they are uh, escorted to the Great Chapel. And it's an interesting way they do their recruitment because it seems like it's a hell of a lot less painful, but a hell of a lot more mentally painful. Like mentally taxing and psychologically damaging as opposed to physically painful. What how 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 is it how is it more mentally taxing? So what happens is that they are brought forth and they are given a the sanguinary chalice from the sanguinary priests which contains okay. the catalyst that'll begin the process of transformation into an Astartes. Um once they drink this from the chapel, they will eventually fall asleep. And they are born by servitors to the apothecarium in which the gene seed of Sanguinius is implanted into their bodies. And they are placed into a mighty golden sarcophagus. Oh. Then they are fed intra uh, like by an IV for the next uh -huh. year uh, with a mixture of nutrients and the blood of Sanguinius... Whoa. While the the gene seed does its work, oh, um, okay, that's uh, okay. That is crazy. You you fall asleep. You're put into a coffin, and you are fed by IV with the blood of Sanguinius and other nutrients. And this will allow them to well, most of them die naturally. <laughs> sure, um, they can't take the sheer strain of the changes that they're taking them. But those that don't are growing. Like, this will make them grow into a strong Astartes. The new organs and everything. Huh. They put on muscle mass. They, they acquire their extra internal organs. The whole thing. Unfortunately, at this time, they also have strange gene, uh, dreams. Because the uh, gene yeah, seed... <laughs> yeah. The gene seed carries memories of Sanguinius. 
who's it's probably a nightmare hellscape. Yeah, whose death echo rattle across the time and space. Yeah. Um, on on rare occasions, the aspirant will awaken well before the year is up, trapped in a claustrophobic, oh, pitch dark no. coffin. Oh, every like that's everybody's worst nightmare, right? Oh, basically, so if being you wake up buried like, alive. So if you wake up three months early, you still have to stay in the coffin for another three months, even though you've woken up. And you're now awake, and so th those physical changes to your body are probably felt more. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not great. That's that's that, that's no no fun. No mas. So no mas. despite being changed into superhuman soldiers, some wake up and escape the coffin. Not the most mentally happy. Yeah, that's probably the understatement of the century. Yes, it is really rough. Yeah, it's yeah. it's just it's very very rough. But now they're neophytes! Yay! Hooray! Also, so all of them are intravenously fed uh, Sanguinius's blood. Is that uh, a little? I mean, not a lot of his blood, but mainly nutrients and some of the blood to coalesce with the gene seed. I was gonna say, like Sanguinius only had so much blood in his body. Like they've only <laughs> got so much of it. There's only, there's a finite amount of Sanguinius blood to give to these people, right? So it's gotta be like what they put like a drop in, like with their fluids or something. I don't know the specific amount of blood. <laughs> so continuing the concept of sanguinary shit, uh, you also have the Sanguinary Guard. The Sanguinary Guard are the super elite veteran Astartes that are the main, well, were the main bodyguard for Sanguinius himself. And okay. these are, they're also known as the Ikasat, I think is how it's pronounced, or the Burning Ones as well for their like <laughs> unwavering devotion. These dudes look baller as hell. Oh, um, nice. Of course, they have to have gold abs. Oh, of course, of course. If you're gonna have armor, you have to have the gold ripped abs. I mean, they they're probably cloned, and they probably have those abs under there anyway. But you know, it's, it's cool. Well, uh, well, I mean, like, yeah, but look at the wings, though. The wings are very cool. Uh, I I love I love jump I love big jump packs, uh, and yeah. I'm 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 in it. That's that's some endless waltz, uh, you know. So the Sanguin shit right there. I don't know what that is, but it's, it's that's fine. don't worry about it. Gundam stuff, but yeah, it's the the classic uh, Sanguinary Guard are pretty common. Not only common, but they're a very popular unit for Blood Angels. Um, they <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, they're they're also very good. So like in game right now. Mm -hmm. um, originally founded by the, and I quote, Exalted Herald of Sanguinius, Azkalon, as Kellyan, as Kalen, whatever. He is the, uh, the venerated hero of the Sanguinary Guard and the main bodyguard of Sanguinius. In fact, so much so that Sanguinius bid him not to join him in the battle against Horus, to stay back in case of he would fall and die. So the, uh, the Sanguinary guard themselves would not go extinct and he could continue to help lead oh he was he was accounting for worst case scenario mm -hmm. he's uh he's quite a, quite the chad yes, uh, he is. with his Poor long blonde hair yep but chad. the the interesting thing that a lot of a lot of fun stuff when it comes to sanguinary guard besides the fact that they have an awesome giant winged jump pack and a huge ass sword and bolter is their death mask it says, oh, the, yeah, yeah, the thing on their face It says this mm -hmm. mask worn by members of the Sanguinary Guard are highly ornate masks modeled on the fear inspiring features of Sanguinius himself that crackles with terrifying halos of golden light that uh, to create a terrifying and fearsome aura projected upon their enemy. The machine yeah. spirit of the mask is bonds closely with its wearer. And when a guard falls in battle, the death mask, death mask is removed with as much ceremony and is placed in a dark tomb for seven days and seven nights in which its stylized features will look like its original bearer. Oh, that's cool. 
So it's it's literally a death mask, and it becomes a death mask for whoever wore it and died in it. Damn, I, it's it's a very cool. cool looking. It's a very cool looking death mask. It even has in game properties where it makes people hard, like you harder to hit because it's terrifying them with its mm -hmm. ornate crackling lightning and the horrifying visage kind of thing. It's ve so, it's very fun. Reminds me a lot of the um, Howling Banshees mask from the mm. Eldar. So Dante's one of these things, right? Because he's got the death mask. Well, he doesn't have the wings, but he's got the gold armor. He's got the big jump pack. He's one of these. So. Guards. So Dante is the chapter master of the Blood Angels. He is, and he oh, was originally okay. the Lord Commander of the Imperium before Gilliman's resurrection, in which Gilliman has uh, taken the role up from him. Okay, cool. Um, Dante does have the crazy uh, death mask. I believe he actually has a fancy one. I think he has something called the... Death Mask, isn't it of Sanguinius? I think it's like, yeah, the Death Mask of Sanguinius is what it's oh, called. Oh, yeah. I, I, I feel, we must have talked about this in the last episode because I do remember something about the Death Mask of Sanguinius and, and Dante or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's they called the Death so Mask similar. of Sanguinius. Well, yeah, yeah it's, it's very similar looking armor, but you know, if you're a yeah. high ranking blood angel, you're going to have that fancy pantsy bullshit. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Dante is currently the Lord Regent of the Imperium Nihilus, where, which is, there's two parts of the Imperium cut off by the giant rift, and I believe Gilliman is the le leader of the other one. Oh, okay. Okay. Which, you know, that makes sense. So Gilliman's leading one, and Dante's leading the other one. Basically, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Dante himself is over 1,500 years old and is the current <laughs> oldest space marine in existence, 1,547 years currently, uh, approximately, uh, with the exception of Dreadnoughts, of course. Mm, oh, um, yeah, of course, of course. There is the caveat that Chaos Space Marines are far older, but that's because the warp has extended their life. Yeah, sure. And like, they're crazy. You got, yeah, you got, like, Typhus. Sure, like, like Typhus yeah. is still alive. He's over 10,000 years old, but, like, he's a giant beehive. Man, I want to live for 1,500 years. Yeah, well, Dante cool. wants to fucking die, so... Dante must die mode. Yep. Da da Dante, Dante must die mode. The idea for <laughs> Dante is that... So there was a, a thing that we'll obviously have to have an episode on called The Devastation of Balm, which I believe is a book series that are apparently extremely good. Um, I've been told that they're just excellent books. And it's about Hive Fleet Leviathan rolling up and just murdering Ball. <laughs> I, I of think I mean, that, it's a Hive Fleet. Like, what are you going to do? I think Ball is dead. I, I don't know if there's any more Ball or Ball Secundus. Because the only reason they, they survived is because Gilliman showed up after his resurrection and was like, I am here. Do your taxes. <laughs> And everybody gets scared and ran away because nobody likes taxes. Taxes are bullshit. But uh, but Dante himself is is tired. He mm -hmm. is very tired. Basically, the idea is that the burdens of the, his, his the weight of his responsibility is weighed heavy on his shoulders for so many uh, hundreds and hundreds of years, and he saw that there is is recorded in the scrolls of Sanguinius that there is a, in the Primarch's visions, that there would be a lone golden warrior that would stand between the Emperor and his destruction. Uh, many believe this to be Sanguinius himself, aboard mm -hmm. Vengeful Spirit. But Dante believes otherwise, that one day, the currently defenseless, helpless, em well, not defenseless, but helpless Emperor will, the fate of him will rest in Dante's hands. And so uh -huh. he's kind of just here... Like, seeing his chapters, like, final days, so to speak. Mm -hmm. the, he didn't expect to see Gilliman come back. He didn't expect to see his entire planet get fucked up by Nids. Nids, yeah, yeah. Who does? He, Who expects he, that? He's just hoping that the day will come when he can finally do what he deems as his duty and he can finally fucking die. Damn. That's true, like, he because he's been alive for 1,500 years of... Not paradise and peace and, you know, just sipping, uh, uh, you know, 
martinis or whatever. He's been alive for 1,500 years of, like, war and horrible bloodshed and battles and just the most awful timeline you could ever exist in. So I guess, you know, yeah, he'd, he'd feel a little burden. Yeah, I guess, yeah, you know, I get it. He, I get he's it. got the burden of his massive golden angelic balls. <laughs> he's got the wheelbarrow for him. The, the, the wheelbarrow of Sanguinius. Mm-hmm, yep, the wheelbarrow of Sanguinius. He's got the death mouse, yep. So there's also another character that I want to touch on real quick. Someone known as the Sanguinor. The Sanguinor. <laughs> the Sanguinor. Okay. The Sanguinor. It is known as the exemplar of the host. And it's basically the blood angel Celestine. Ah. Okay. So the Sanguinor is a entity of mysterious unknown origin that is named after Sanguinius, and no one really understands what in God's name it is, but it arrives in the middle of battle out of nowhere and immediately starts to body shit. Wow. It just shows up, kills a lot of shit, and then just leaves, and nobody really understands who, what, where, when, why, how? I guess it's more so like a Legion of the Damned as opposed to Celestine. But it's a Blood Angels Legion of the Damned. It rolls up. It, lo it looks like a giant manifestation of Sanguinius. Not quite his size or anything, but, you know, it looks like him, as you can tell. Yeah, and definitely. he rolls up and beats the shit out of people. Huh. Well, it, it, whoever, whoever it is looks very cool. Very dope. Uh, I like the look a lot in this one artwork. In-game, it actually is a little fun because the uh, Sanguinor just arrives like... Like you, like in in the middle of the battle, you can just place him there in combat. You're like, here he is. Oh, does he have a mini? Oh yeah, it's not very good looking though. Oh, uh, it's like one of those old ones that just looks really bleh, unless you yeah. like, are super hardcore into painting and really uh, glitz it up. Yeah, it's him and the Sanguinary Guard are pretty old looking. If you could, you could tell he doesn't look great. Oof. <laughs> Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, that's not great. You're right. Least, that's not great at all. At least the artwork looks pretty good. Oh, yeah. The artwork of him, the, the two pieces that I've seen look great, but man, that mini is a disaster. Yeah. The, the old Sanguinor mini is not good. Uh, the Sanguinary Guard minis are not much better, but. Uh, ah, here is Shy's text. Would you like to read? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, Shia says, well, it's a wall of text, but TLDR, it's possible a bodyguard of Sanguinius who sacrificed himself pr to protect him and got consumed by the warp, but he's such a badass, he turned into a warp entity that comes back once in a while to protect blood angels. Interesting. Oh, so, so he's just a bodyguard of Sanguinius that was just so goddamn cool that he turned into a warp being. That just kind of shows up and helps out the. Mm. I'm so I just, mean, the the warp is fucky wucky and the bodyguard was really dope. That that sounds like it's certainly a possibility, but everything is a possibility in this damn game. So it's like, really, yeah. what what is the true, the true choice of the matter? Yeah. They also like their apothecaries are often known as sanguinary priests in the Blood Angels, which is kind of fun. Um, just that's just the name of them is sanguinary priests. There's also a bunch Everything. of other guys like Tycho the Lost and Lamartes and, and mm -hmm. uh, 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 too many. Everything in the Blood Angels is a sanguine something. It's the sanguinary bodyguards, the sanguinary priests, the sanguinary uh, chemists, the sanguinary soldier, the sanguinary bodyguards. It's this, man, this, they this, love this. that sanguine blood stuff, don't they? <laughs> They're just like we really want it. It's like the wolf. It's like the space wolves where everything has to be named Wolf. And they yep. just make sure they really show you. We exactly really want you to know that we're all about the sanguine. We're all about the blood. I, I don't know if you noticed this from our name or not, but yeah. Shy's like, I see no issues with that, says Ultramarine <laughs> from Ultramar. <laughs> Same. Yep. Yep. But at least so, it's not like all it's not like an ultrameric uh bodyguard, right? Or, well, I guess they're just ultramarine body. I don't know. Yeah, I was just Ultramarines from Ultramar. Whatever, it's yeah. not important. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, the 
that's all a lot of that stuff in terms of the blood angels, blood angelly, angelly angels. Uh, the Blangles. In, in, the Blangles. In game, they do have a lot of really fun names for their rules. Their chapter trait is called Savage Echoes, um, mm. which gives them uh, plus one for, which is when they're like turn three on, which gives them an extra attack, which is a lot, cool. which is pretty good and make them super murdery. Um, then their actual chapter tactic gives them an increased ability to wound, which is quite fun because it's a really common strat to like take death company with two chain swords. And then it's like, oh, the chain swords aren't very good against tough targets, but you get plus one to wounds. So who cares? And you run up and you just start shoving teeth. <laughs> um, shoving teeth. And shoving rrr, teeth. Rrr. Yep. I get it. There's get uh it. there are rules for if you want to use the black rage on certain characters. They can't fall back from combat. They can't perform any actions, but they get extra attacks and they're tankier. Um huh. you can actually use the black range it, rage in game. Well, it's a part of the death company units that it's like a uh, statistic they have. Oh, okay. I was going to say as a blood angel, you can just have them fall to the black rage just bleh. That'd be cool. Yeah. Uh, you can actually uh, create a special character Captain Death Company version if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, you can give them a special ability called Death Visions, which is as the deeply Ooh. ingrained memories of Sanguinius' final battle flood the mind of the warrior lost to the Black Rage, they believe they are the Primarch himself confronting the Arch Traitor. And so there are three special abilities you can get called the Grace of the Angel, on the Bridge of the Vengeful Spirits, and to Slay the War Master. Oh, that's dope. I like that a lot. The um the Slay the War Master one is pretty fun. It says you can only use this if it, if you like both you are fighting an enemy character, like it's character on character. It's so like it's you, it's Horus. <laughs> it's Horus. And then, I see you, Horus. It says, uh, in, instead of in making any attacks against them, you both roll a dice, and if you win, you do, like, D3 plus 3 mortal wounds, which is an insanely high number. Damn. So it's like, all right, I'm not even going to roll my attacks. This is it. <laughs> Woo! Hi, you've, you've killed Horus. Well done. There's uh, the, the Grace of an Angel, which gives you, like, a lot of tankiness. The Bridge of the Vengeful Spirit gives you a... It says plus one to your attack characteristic for every five enemy models that are next to you. So it's like just a bloody mm. mess. Mm -hmm. It's pretty fun. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, those are cool. As for their psychic powers, there is the one where they can literally sprout psychic wings and fly, which is fucking awesome. Oh, that's so um, cool. Sprouting psychic wings? Hell yeah. There's blood boil. It says drives his enemy's lifeblood into a seething frenzy, causing it to boil in the victim's veins a split second before bursting from every pore in an explosive finality. Ew. <laughs> That's so gross. Boil your blood in your skin and just, oh, it just erupts from all your, oh. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a happy death. There's a blood lance. Conjure a mighty lance infused with innermost rage, and you throw this lance of blood at people. <laughs> blood magic? Okay, cool, cool. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Like, you know, blood magic, pretty awesome. Yeah, blood um, magic, always super dope. Hell yeah. A little heretical, but, you know, it's okay. There's, uh, there's a couple other, like, special relics they can have. I, I like the Visage of Death. This exqui exquisitely crafted mask is a thing of dark beauty to the blood angels and a sign of impending doom to the others. The unchanging expression of the mask inspires fear and uncertainty in confident enemies. They see no anger, pain, or elation in the wearer's face. Clues to the warrior's state of mind in a duel. It's just like this blank stare. Damn. All right. That's, I mean, that's, 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 that's cool. Uh, I, I, I really like that... Uh... Um, what is the Black Company or whatever ones where, you know. The Death Company? The Death Company ones. Jeez, the Black Company. Jeez. Um, yeah. Where well, uh, they, they think they're going to the Black after Rage. Horus. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like those a lot. Those are really cool. The rules, anyway. Those are a lot of fun. Um, uh, you can. Oh, here it is. There's the rules for called The Lost, which is giving uh, Death Company to captains and lieutenants. Which is like your higher level things. You can, uh, you yeah. can make Death Company like uh, dreadnoughts. Um, you can make Psyker dreadnoughts, which is kind of nuts. 
which is Psycho always dreadnoughts. it was always so fucking funny the psycho dreadnought stuff because you could basically just cast like wings of sanguinius on it and this dreadnought sprouts fucking <laughs> wings and flies across the battlefield it's like Whoa! that's a sight <laughs> that that is a sight to see why is that so, box flying this is literally just this big ass box flying across the battlefield with like angry yelling that is that would ah, i would love to see that i would love so, to see an artist rendition of something like that the flying box yeah the flying box yeah i don't got a whole lot of other blood angel stuff left to talk about i was trying to keep the episode to about an hour like per usual and naturally we have a gigantic amount of shit because blood angels are enormous there's a lot of blood angels one of the most popular factions out there i covered a decent amount the devastation of Ball, Dante, Mephiston, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's so many other things that we could do an episode on later. But for the time being, that's what you got, everybody. You the did blangles. it. You did it. I did it. I talked about the Blood Angels. I've I really like the Blood Angels. I, I'm a big fan of Sanguinius. I'm a big fan of them. You know, I, th I, 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 think, I think they might overtake the Thousand Suns in my hierarchy of stuff i like in 40k i like the blangles Ooh. the, the like blood angels a lot they are they're a very popular faction and for many a good reason they are they are liked for for all the types of craziness and sad feeling that you get from playing them and uh and we also have another thousand suns episode yet so you never really know True, but I mean, I I know the basic background of the Thousand Suns, and I don't know. I think the Blangles are just cooler. Sanguinius is super dope. Uh, their units are cool. Dante seems like a Chad. I mean, Red Thirst, Black Rage. I really like the Blood Angels, man. I like them. All right. I like them a lot. I like them a lot. All right. You're feeling it. Mm-hmm. I'm really that feeling it. Feeling it. That's what I got. That's what I got for the episode. Shy, do you have anything to say before we round it all out? Yeah, did we miss anything? Is there something we need to cover? I mean, I mean, I'm sure I missed plenty, but Well, yeah, you know. but any stifling need? Ooh, oh, Shy says she Shy has a hot take. She doesn't feel them because they're kind of overcomplicated. Too much shit going on with them. It's a fair take, I think. There's a well, lot going that, on with the red, uh, the red thirst, the black rage, uh, Sanguinius, there's Dante, there's you know the Sanguinor, and yeah, that's that's a fair take. I don't think that's a hot take. Uh, it's an unsurprising take. Local orc fan thinks Space Marines too complicated. <laughs> I didn't think about it that way, but that's also. Very on brand for Shy. Sure, sure. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Shy, aren't you building Alpha Legion? Oh, that's true. She is building Alpha Legion. Speaking of overcomplicated. Too complicated. <laughs> Speaking of overcomplicated. Damn, Bricky is just lighting poor Shy up. I'm I I was on Shy's side for this. Let it be known. This is what this is what she gets for for shooting me in the. I she she was the <laughs> one who shot that barrel in the game, and she blamed it on blamed it on you. Well, no, you thought it was me, but I was like, no, I saw that barrel light up, and I was like, I'm out. I am out of here. I know how shy is in multiplayer games. Remember, remember when we started playing Back for Blood, and within five seconds, we all just started murdering each other. Back oh, for God. Blood. Back for blood. blood. Blood angels. Blood angels. It ah! all goes full circle. Let's ah, go. End the, all right, end the stream. Yeah, end it. Yeah.